Now, the issues and challenges faced by women in business can often be different from those faced by their male counterparts. Well, we're now joined by Erica Watson from Prowess, who is here to offer us some insight into how women can deal with some of these challenges on their way to business success. Very good to see you. Thank you for coming in. Um, Let's start by talking about Prowess. What is it? Well, Prowess, we're the voice for women's enterprise. We're a national association of organisations which help women start and grow businesses. Um, We've got about 300 members who support 100,000 women in business every year. They provide business support, access to finance, mentoring and networking. Okay. So what, in your opinion, are the main issues facing women in business today? Well, first, can I say that it's never been a better time for women to be in business. The economy's changing. Um, Globalisation means that some of the skills and attributes which women are more likely to have, like really good communication skills, um, the ability to multitask, to negotiate, etc., etc., are more in demand than ever before and a real asset if you're in business. But despite that, there are still some issues which women face. Top of the top of the shop, if you like, is um, finance, access to finance. It's it's not just about availability of money, it's about women's attitude to money as well. So women start their businesses with, on average, just one third of the capitalisation of their male counterparts. And because it's more difficult to access the finance? Uh, not just. It's actually, you know, a sort of a, a type of risk aversion as well. Women like to grow their businesses more gradually. But that low level of capitalisation, which is all sizes and sectors of business, it's not just small business, means that their growth prospects are really hampered. So that is a big issue. Um, other issues, you know, if, if you're running a business, you, you need contracts. And women's businesses, you know, about 15% of the business stock, but they access just 3% of procurement contracts from the corporate and public sector. So you can see again, that really hampers growth prospects. And that's an issue of access to networks. It's about, you know, having those relationships with the people who give those contracts, getting around the table. So so whose fault is that? Is it the fault of businesses or is it the fault of the women because they're risk averse and they don't want to be out there meeting and greeting? So it's, 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 it, it's more uh, an issue of um, custom and practice. People do business with people they know. So yes, network networking is an issue, but breaking into those networks can be difficult. So it's, it's, you know, women are phenomenal networkers. They're out there networking, but they're perhaps not accessing the right kind of networks to help their businesses to grow. That's interesting. Now, what about perception and attitudes to women in business? Is, is that still in this day and age a barrier? It's not as bad as it was. Um, you know, b- women can suffer from being patronised, from not being taken seriously. And it's not just men. Other women can be just, you know, can, can be some of the worst offenders there. But um, when we talk to women in business and ask them about that, a lot of them say to us, um, actually being a woman is a real asset, particularly if you're in a non-traditional sector, like we, lots of women starting up in science and technology sectors, interestingly, and they find that being a woman, uh, you know, that being unusual is, gives them a marketing edge. So sometimes you can turn it on its head and really make use of it. Are there certain sectors which are particularly difficult, do you think, still for women? I mean, you know, for example, in media mm. communication, there are a lot of women in, mm. in those uh, industries. But are, but are there some that are still very difficult for women to get involved in, to be successful in? I think within the workplace, yes. You know, um, we've talked about science and technology, construction, things like that. But um, what we're finding is in those sectors where women are finding it difficult to get to the top, they're actually um, coming through at the education level. They're much more highly educated and women are coming into those sectors. We have what you call a kind of wedge with lots of women at the um, entry levels. And as you become more and more senior, the proportion of women are, are reducing. So those women are jumping off that glass ceiling spot and setting up their own businesses and really making a success of it because they're you know, very highly educated, extremely well experienced women who are being blocked, huge loss of talent. Mm. And um, that's coming through in entrepreneurship now. So, so what are the key messages to women out there? What, what would you advise? How do you deal with, clearly you've uh, said there, are, there is a problem, mm. we are dealing with it. What would your advice be to women? Well, Break through your networks, get to the next level, get to the people you want to contract with you who are, who are bigger than you, take a step up and get a mentor. 
you know, ident don't wait for a mentoring program, but look out there, is there anyone you really admire who you'd like to emulate? Ask them, will they be your mentor? Because um, most people actually, you know, really appreciate the opportunity to help others. So I think that's a, a huge asset to, to any women in business. And, and also get advice, get the best advice you can and make sure from the offset that your business is properly capitalised. Do you think there's still an issue over childcare and employers thinking, oh, I'm a bit concerned about employing women of a certain age who then might go and have families? Or has that just gone now? We now live in a knowledge economy. Talent is everything. I think good forward-looking employers know that they cannot afford to lose good people. And we all know as well when we're in the workplace that men are increasingly likely to have childcare issues as well, you know, as childcare issues are are more shared. So I don't think it's an issue for progressive employers. I think it can be a problem for small businesses. And you know, s small businesses um, don't have the same perks around support for childcare that large businesses do. For example, um, their tax breaks to set up work workplace creches, but it's very difficult for um, because of the um, initial costs for small businesses mm. to access those. And the other thing is that directors of company can't access, can't use that creche. So for a small business led by a woman who has childcare needs, there is a real problem and that's something one of Privacy's roles is campaigning for, for a better deal for women in business and that's something that we're, um, we're looking at. Okay, and so finally, what resources are out there for women who are setting up businesses or in business or want more help, more advice? Well, um, Business Link uh, is a very good signposter of other um, resources, finance, networking, mentoring that's out there. And Prowess also has a quality standard, a flagship award for best practice in women's enterprise development. Got a network of 42 organisations who have achieved that standard. They're on our website. If a woman contacts any of these organisations, they will get very good information support signposting to the next level. Fantastic. Thank you very much for coming in and enlightening us. Thank you.